in the Declaration of Independence, was Thomas Jefferson correct? Is it true, all humans are born with unalienable rights? There are those who disagree, the former president Woodrow Wilson, in his 1908 book, alleged those unalienable rights were nonsense. His book also highlights the influence Darwin had over Wilson's reasoning, in the birth of the living constitutional argument. During the beginning half of the 20th century, many became obsessed with evolution, manifesting in social perversion of Charles Darwin's work. Herbert Spencer's popular phrase, survival of the fittest, became part of the catalyst within social Darwinism, the prelude to eugenics, race purification, the dissolution of those fittest ideologies often resulting in mayhem in past and present, while inspiring the proliferation of masterminds. Analyzing the phrase, survival of the fittest. First, you must have life in order to survive. Second, this life must have freedom within its domain to flow or take a path of least resistance for survival. Third, have enough energy in the pursuit of survival, otherwise, there is no life. Finally we have survival, a form of positive feedback for all life, and a prerequisite for human happiness. Hence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unbeknownst to Charles and Herbert, it would seem, their observations were the embodiment of life's unalienable rights. The claim Jefferson made 80 some years earlier. Imagine the possibilities during the first half of the 20th century, if social Darwinism embraced survival of the happiest instead of survival of the fittest. Over 200 years ago, one nation took the road less traveled and designed a federal republic to embrace and protect the individual's unalienable rights from the crimes of others and from the crimes of government, no more, no less, a constitutional design, not living, but stable like the laws of nature. The state governments did all the rest, compete with each other for the best and brightest, by the free flow of governance objectives from the people inspiring the local, commonality within the county, stability by the state. As a result, the, the United States changed the world like no other social system in recorded history in a short 200-year period, by the fruits of technology, food production, and medicine, the stables of human existence throughout the world today, and after the dust settled and honoring our heroes, through the altruism of our compassion, helped rebuild Europe and Japan after World War II. A compelling example when our unalienable rights are morally free to flow and operate within the awesome machinery of nature, and in Jefferson's words, the laws of nature and of nature's God. Jefferson being a man of faith, like all those of faith, understands God created the universe and everything in it, which includes the laws of nature. Therefore, the laws of nature is the handwriting of God, and the scientific method is a way to read God's handwriting. Today, this awesome machinery of nature is known as the physical constructal law, discovered by Professor Adrian Bijan of Duke University. Uh, for a flow system to persist in time, uh, it must evolve, time arrow, uh, freely such that it provides greater access to its currents. Uh, this is a river delta, uh, here we have a, uh, the lung of, the, of, a, of a person, um, and uh, uh, you see it because something is flowing or something was flowing. So uh, flow in a, um, in a space that's uh, free to morph, meaning a flow that, is, uh, that possesses freedom is, uh, is the one that uh, impresses us with, uh, with configuration, with, uh, with uh, what I, we call in engineering design. The constructal law governs evolution in biology, physics, technology, social organization, adding depth, and resolution to the symphony of flow conducted by the laws of nature through time.
One of the properties of the laws of nature is symmetry, and we have symmetry between the constructal law and life's unalienable rights. Michael Takat studied the symmetry and found morality, the rule of law, and economics are an outgrowth of life's unalienable rights, which is an outgrowth of the constructal law. Unalienable rights is a depiction of life's bioprogram, where R is the relationship between life and the laws of nature, or another life form, or a social system. Life's unalienable rights flow throughout the continuum of the living universe. As the life of your blood cells have freedom within their domain in the pursuit of their objective, delivering oxygen to your organs, while those organs pursue their objective in delivering life support to your brain. Your brain has the freedom in the pursuit of enjoying your next meal, the main course of survival, bone appetit. In a simple experiment, take the freedom from your respiratory system away, by holding your breath for a number of minutes. Eventually, you will feel discomfort by the intensity of negative feedback from your biology. Throughout history, man's freedom in the pursuit of an objective, a dream comes into reality when he morally follows the laws of nature, hence, happiness in lifting the tide of the standard of living for all. <laughs>